Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I thought I'd do a quick update on these two. Um, the Harvey Annum um, took it out of its pot, virtually no live root, so it's had a haircut. Um, the couple that look like they might survive, including down at the base of uh, that plant, they've been left on. The whole of the base of the plant was given a soak in the um, Fisan, and the idea now is to let it dry off. That, that's my theory, that's why it's in the glass, it's got no water in there and later on today I will dry the inside of the glass again because there's a lot of condensation forming because obviously the base of the plant's soaking wet at the moment. I thought I'd revisit this one. Now as I said, you've got no sign of any bugs on these leaves. <laughs> Don't get fooled. I don't know how much of that the camera is going to pick up. There is a silvery tinge to the underside of these leaves. Now the problem with spider mites is we've got two types. And there is one type that if you've got them and you sort of get, well, I tend to use my thumb. <laughs> I'm not a very hygienic person. but um, Or a, a damp tissue will do it better and keep your hands clean. I tend to wet my thumb and do that. Yeah? Now if you get a, a rusty coloured tinge, you've effectively squashed some, and that's the colour of them when you squash them. Unfortunately, like I said, there's two types. That will only work with the type that are orange, as adults. Yeah? The other type are a creamy colour, sort of a almost a greeny yellow, but they've got virtually no colour and that will not find them. Yeah, so you can do that and think you haven't got them when you have. Because they don't leave a stain. Right. Obviously I can't show the individuals because they're too small. But there is a silvery tinge to the underside of the leaves. Now under normal circumstances spider mites will always go for the underside. Yeah? They just do. Um, if they get bad enough, they'll have the whole flipping plant, stems and all. But um, there is a remote possibility that this has got spider mite damage. It's, it's difficult to tell emphatically. I mean, that might be the natural coloration of the underside of the leaves. Um, but then the underside of the leaves on the new growth aren't like it. So we may have had a... No, oh, that's a bad one. There, yeah, look, that is it. I would say, without any shadow of a doubt, that spider mite damage. Now you have to bear in mind, I've just fumigated this greenhouse, so in theory they're dead. Um, but not necessarily. If any eggs survive the fumigation process, then they will hatch out. Um, I don't think those smoke type operations actually get eggs. Might do, I don't know. I mean, it's effectively designed to produce a poisonous gas in the air. So anything that breathes dies. Well, eggs don't, I don't think, anyway. Not until they hatch out into something else that crawls around or flies or does something like that. So, um, given the conditions I've had in here through the summer, it is quite possible that a few of those have got a hold on some plants. Um... sign on there so I, they tend to go for the thinner softer leaf plants rather than the thick fleshy ones so they're more likely to be on things like oncidiums really well, no sign there that's an old leaf anyway so I don't bother with that one um, yeah it's gonna be again looking at older oncidium leaves that have got typical oncidium marks on them that no, there's no sheen or anything on these leaves. Um, I'm not going to go around every flipping plant. But in theory, if that smoke thing's worked, then at least the adult population and any, anything with legs or wings should be gone. It doesn't stop more hatching out, of course, which is why I've ordered some more. Um, and hopefully they'll arrive in the time scale I'm after, given when that... Um, fumigation process was done, I'm after about a five or six day gap, followed by another five or six day gap. 
which in theory will get the flipping things. So I was just looking at that yellow thing because there's lots of specks on there. The light just happens to be shining across it. That does tend to get some adults of certain sorts of things. The yellow attracts them. Um, that's probably just bits of sphagnum <laughs> stuff that have been knocked off. Anyway, um, that could explain. I mean, spider mites leave cell damage um, that does affect the leaves. It still doesn't, the top of the leaves still don't look right to me for spider mite damage on the underside of the leaves. Yeah. I mean, even though I may have a few spider mites, I'm, I'm not doing the panic. Um, not in here. Um, once that heat goes and I get my humidity back, this place will be what I call back to normal. And um, given it's been like that for years and years, and I've only ever had one plant with a bad outbreak, and quite honestly, that plant was right up in that corner, touching the brickwork, and hardly ever got touched. Yeah, it was one that needed virtually no water in the winter, and in fact it was during autumn. And that's the only plant I've ever had a distinct infection on. That doesn't mean to say they haven't got in here and got going, because the sort of hot, drier weather we've had would be just the job for them. They would love it. Um, but anyway, I mean, at the moment, I'm relying on that um, fumigation process because it means I don't have to go around checking every single plant and perhaps individually spraying individual plants, which is a right faff, to say the least. I mean, I could get the big sprayer out, mix up some systemic pesticide and just spray all the plants, but there's no way I'd get the whole plant. Not, not doing it that way. Some undersides of leaves will get missed. Some top leaves may even get list, missed because they're underneath another leaf and things like that. So it wouldn't be a thorough process, whereas the smoke gets to everything. So uh, we'll see how we go. But yeah, there is a distinct silvery tinge on those leaves. I mean, I've actually got, um, I found the worst one I could find, which is that one, and got the magnifying glass, and I can't see anything moving. But then if that, like I say, if that smoke's done its job, they're dead anyway. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Anyway, at the moment, this is still really an unknown. I'm still not confident that that's what's causing these yellowing marks on the top of the leaf. These are thick, fleshy leaves. So some surface cell damage to the underside done by spider mites is unlikely to affect the top side of the leaf. And spider mite damage doesn't leave stripes and patches. It's a, it's a sort of uniform, like I say, a silvery sort of tinge that you get. That's the first signs anyway. If it gets really bad, you start getting webs and, you know, you, that does look... Definitely does look a bit like spider mite damage to me. And it won't be old damage because these two large growths with the worst of affected leaves are mine. They've been grown in this grow room. So and there isn't there aren't many bugs that can leave a leaf looking like that. I mean a yellow patch like that could have been a scale bite when the leaf was younger. Yeah? But to get marks like this, that's not bugs. That's something else. So either we've got something nasty in the plant, or it's a deficiency. And if it's a deficiency, it's most likely to be nit nitrogen, simply because it's a balanced feed it's getting, but this is an incredibly vigorous grower. So it may be, you know, just a little short in places. And the trouble is with nitrogen, the plant will deplete older parts of the plant to keep the newer plant parts going. It will move it around so it can leave parts, you know, deficient in places. So, uh, anyway, uh, just a quick look. Um, this is the one I'm more worried about because in reality this plant is dying. Um, this one isn't dying. It's got some problem. It's got a problem or even some problems, but this one is. So by drying the base of that plant off, and only giving it a small amount of moisture now and again and allowing it to dry in between. If there is any rot that's set in, maybe it'll stop 
uh, maybe not. Um, but I want to get those, as I said, there are a few new roots. Now I've got the media off. This, this part of the plant has actually got, do you know what? There's a flipping new growth there that I missed. Can you see it? Well, presumably you can. There is a new growth there. And there are new roots at the base of that new growth. We may be able to save it. Um, when I got it out, I know I said it looked like two plants. It wasn't. Um, the base is entirely joined. There is a single new growth. Right, well, perhaps it's, perhaps it's going to get going then. Um, a new growth with associated roots means the growth itself can be hydrated. And if it pushes on, so will the roots, unless there is something seriously wrong with it. And um, maybe it'll recover. It'll be a long time, though. You know, one single new growth does not make a new dendrobium. <laughs> Still, we'll see how we get on. Um, as I say, that's, uh, I think I might actually go over that one with the systemic um, now um, and get it done. And then I'll be happy. Um, it's a contact killer. It will kill spider mites. It's on the list. In fact, it's one of the main items on the list that that spray kills. And they, these are tiny little blighters. Providing you cover, providing, providing you get something on them that deals with them, they will die. You know, then the difficult part is getting them all normally. <laughs> you know, you miss some and they'll carry on. But um, if I give that a thoroughly good spray, top side and bottom side, with the contact and systemic, then as I'm pretty confident there are some on there, or there may have been some on there, but still some eggs lurking, hopefully that will deal with any more adults that may manage to hatch out. So that's what we'll do with that then. See you next time.